by Gemmel CDs part 17. <laughs> Hoi hoi everybody and welcome to part 17 of a look at my general CDs. So it's just normal CDs, no box sets, no compilations, soundtracks, signed stuff, print stuff, but anything else pretty much. Um, let's just carry on, just working my way through the shelves behind me. Uh, previous parts I've shown a lot of blur, this is Midlife A Beginner's Guide to Blur. There's nothing rare or anything on this but it's just a nice two CD best of covering all their career apart from the Magic Whip album, is that what it's called? The last reunion album anyway, but covers the rest of their career and has Pop Scene on it for the first time on a compilation, which was a non-album single. Uh, Catatonia's debut album Way Beyond Blue, uh, Sweet Catatonia's great, You've Got A Lot To Answer For's great. Uh, the rest of the stuff's very good. They sort of progressed from here, but it was a good start. Uh, Fatboy Slim's third album, I think, Palookaville. Uh, slash dot dash, Don't Let the Man Get You Down. Jingo Low Bart, The Joker. Never standouts for me looking at it. But good, strong album. Finley Quay's Maverick A Strike. Uh, he was really big for a while. He's descended into madness pretty much. You don't need anything other than this album for him, but this is a great album. Uh, sort of poppy reggae. Uh, Sunday Shining was a big hit. It's Great When We're Together was a big hit. Even After All was a big hit. Uh, I think those were the only three singles but yeah Sunday Shining in particular was huge this is Franz Ferdinand's debut album uh, so this has got Take Me Out on there which is just an amazing track uh, Michael was also a single Dark of a Matinee was also a single another great track but yeah really strong album Showed a few fun loving criminals in the previous part. This is their debut album, 100% Colombian. No, that was their second album, which I've already shown. It's their debut album, Come Find Yourself. Great, great, great album. I also have uh, just up top shelf, sort of varish. Um, that's the box set that's got this on CD and with loads of extras plus couple of vinyl bits in there as well um, but yeah just great great album uh, Scooby Snacks huge hit King of New York big hit and what was the other singer Fun Loving Criminal of course um, big hit and their cover we have All the Time in the World which wasn't a hit but it's done well for them a uh, little run of Chili Peppers now so I showed Stadium Arcadium earlier and said how I went off them after that. Uh, this is mainly the early stuff running up to that. So, not sure why that's not. That'll probably crop up at some point. Anyway, this is their second album, Freaky Styly, uh, produced by George Clinton. Uh, very good album. They're still finding their way, as I've said for a few artists on their early albums. But it's got some good stuff on it uh, Jungle Man, Hollywood. If You Want Me To Stay, their cover of the Sloan Family Stone track, Freaky Styly, uh, Catholic Schoolgirls Rule, Yertle with Turtle, a couple of others. Good album. Their third album, Uplift Mofo Party Plan. Uh, a lot of their first few albums were troubled because they kept losing band members for various reasons, including death. Um, so I never got a settled band until Mother's Milk onwards and then that didn't last. Uh, this has got me and my friends on it which they still play to this day. Backwards was a single, Behind the Sun was a single, 
Uh, special secret song inside, aka party on your pussy. Uh, organic anti beatbox band, fight like a brave for the single. Yeah, good album. They're really starting to get there. Mother's Milk was their first really good album. Uh, this is when John Frusciante joined. Uh, Higher Ground, their cover of the Stevie Wonder track. Subway to Venus, Knock Me Down was their first proper hit, really. Uh, Taste for Pain, Fire, their cover of the Stevie, uh, Jimi Hendrix track. Pretty Little Ditty. And when it gets hard to read because of the writing, Pink on Green is never a good combination to my eyes. Uh, Sexy Mexican Maid, Johnny Kick Hole in the Sky. Yeah, it's their first, as I say. Really good album. Then they left whoever they were on many EMI. Yeah, EMI went to Warner Brothers. They're sort of parting shots. They have EMI released a what what hits. So it's sort of a best of a lot of the singles that were released, but none of them were hits, hence what hits. However, um just checking I'm right here. Yes. Part of their contract was that they were allowed the pick of the song for their first album for Warner Brothers, which was the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album, and naturally they picked Under the Bridge, so that's on here as well. Then they released a bit later a sort of follow up compilation out in LA. So this is all sorts of remixes and live bits and demos and just odds and sods from their time at EMI. It's nothing amazing on here, but it's okay. This is, in my opinion, their masterpiece, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, their first album for Warner Brothers. Just an amazing, amazing, amazing album. Um, Under the Bridge, give it away. Big hits from this. I have this on vinyl now as well. Then John Frusciante left the band for the first time. And they brought in Dave... Ah, his name's just gone. Dave, Dave, Dave. Begins with an F, I think. Dave. Dave. Navarro, don't begin with an F, from uh, Jane's Addiction and released, recorded and released One Hot Minute. Uh, I really like this album. Warped was a single. My Friends, I think, was a single. And possibly Aeroplane. Yeah, I think Aeroplane was a single as well. I l love Warped, loved Aeroplane, loved My Friends. Love P, which is a silly little song that Flea sings. Uh, love One Big Mob, love Walkabout, love Tearjerker, love What in the Hot Minute, and love Transcending. I think it's uh, an underrated album. Uh, and John Frusciante, Dave Navarro left, John Frusciante rejoined, and they did Californication. I think this is the right order. Um, this is when they started really getting really popular. Uh, this has got uh, the title track, Get On Top, Around the World, and Right On Time, I think, with the singles from this. Uh, really good, really strong album. Up there, amongst their best. And back to them in a minute. Um, next we have Beatles Live at the BBC. This is the original release of the Live at the BBC um, compilation. They re-released it when they did in a smaller package when they also released Live at BBC 2. Volume 2, not BBC 2. Um, so similar to that, it's a compilation of their BBC recordings and interview snippets and all sorts of bits like that. But yeah, enjoyable. Uh, on a related note, this is Paul McCartney's Kisses on the Bottom. So this was his album he released in 2012 of, it's sort of his, his American songbook album, sort of classic songs like um, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter, It's Only a Paper Moon, Accentuate the Positive, Bye Bye Blackbird, Inchworm, you know, that sort, that sort of stuff. It's okay. His voice was starting to go at this point, so he doesn't always fit the songs particularly well. But yeah, it's okay. Uh, this is the deluxe edition. It's got 
two new songs with guest appearances by Eric Clapton and Stevie Wonder, two bonus tracks, and a bonus digital download of Paul McCartney's performance at Capitol Studios, Hollywood, California, which I think I probably downloaded. It's probably on my computer somewhere. Uh, this is Paul Simon's A Rhythm of the Saints. This was a fairly recent charity shop purchase. Um, so this was the follow-up to Graceland. So whereas Graceland was um, African influence, this is South American influence. Uh, the Obvious Child was the, the hit from this. It's good. I prefer Graceland, but it's a good album. This is an album... I don't believe in guilty pleasures, but if I did, this would be classed as a guilty pleasure. But this is Bruce Willis' The Return of Bruno. Um, I've shown all the singles from this. I recently got this on vinyl. I haven't played it yet, but I've shown that. Um, I just love this album. Always have done. Always will. This is Britney Spears, Greatest Hits My Prerogative. Britney Spears has done some great, great songs. Uh, Hit Me Baby One More Time, obviously. Toxic is, I think, one of the best pop songs ever written. Oops, I Did It Again was good. I'm a Slave For You was good. Uh, Overprotected was good. Lucky's a really good ballad. Uh, Born To Make You Happy was pretty good. I'm Not A Girl, Not Yet A Woman's pretty good. So I was happy to pick this up, and she looks amazing on the cover. Uh, I also bought the DVD of this as well. Uh... Subsequent to this, Womanizer was a great song. If You See Gamey was a really great song as well. So yeah, she's got her problems and she's done some pap, but she's also done a lot of really good stuff. This is Catatonia's second album, International Velvet, which proves I was right when I recorded the earlier video as to the title. Um, this was their big album, sort of peak Britpop era, Mulder and Scully, Road Rage. With a big hits, um, Strange Glue was a single, I think, and Game On possibly, but yeah, really good album. Apart from what I've mentioned, International Velvet title track is a great track. I Am a Mob's a great track. Johnny Come Lately is a great track, but the whole thing's really good. This is Tom Jones's Reload album. So this was one of many comebacks for Tom Jones. Uh, this was 1999. This was his album of duets with people who were relevant at the time. Uh, Burning Down a House with the Cardigans was a single. Mama Told Me Not To Come with Stereophonics. Single that gets played regularly to this day. Uh, he did Are You Gonna Go My Way with Robbie Williams. He did All Mine with a Divine Comedy. All Mine is Portishead song. That is a brilliant track. I know I'm biased because I'm a big Divine Comedy fan, but that really is a great track. Uh, Sunny Afternoon with Space. I'm Left, You're Right, She's Gone with James Dean Bradfield. Lead singer of Manix. Sex Bomb with Moose Tees, obviously a huge hit. Uh, you Need Love Like I Do with Heather Small. Looking Out My Window with James Taylor Quartet, that's okay. Sometimes We Cry with Van Morrison, that's okay. Lust for Life with Pretenders, that was good. Little Green Bag with Bare Naked Ladies was good. Ain't That A Lot of Love with Simply Red. I can't stand Simply Red, but that's not too bad because one of the reasons, which I've mentioned before, that I, I think I have anyway, my biggest problem with Simply Red is that Mick Hucknall has got a great voice, but he chooses terrible songs to sing. Ever since If You Don't Know Me By Now was a hit, he's sort of gone for the safe middle of the road, please the old dears songs, rather than doing good bluesy rock songs. Um, because that's a good bluesy rock song, it works. Uh, she Drives Me Crazy, the... Um, Find Young Animals track with Zuccaro, that's okay. Never Tear Us Apart with Natalie Imbruglia, that's okay. Baby It's Cold Outside with Keris Matthews from Catatonia, which obviously was a big hit as well. And Motherless Child with Portis Ed, which was great. But yeah, so that's a really good album. Uh, back to the Chili Peppers. This is live in Hyde Park. So in 2004, they did two nights at Hyde Park in London. Uh, support came from... Oh, a punky band of women who were terrible. I was there. I was went to one of the nights. Um, they were terrible. They got booed off pretty much. I'm trying to see if they thanked them. 
Oh, it was three nights they did at Hyde Park. Uh, I haven't got a poster or anything in my artwork. No, I'll look it up and put it on the screen. But they were, they were a punky, all-female band, and they were really bad. Um, and James Brown. James Brown supporting Red Hot Chili Peppers never felt right. Um, it was okay. It was a good gig, but I hated Hyde Park as a venue. It's unless you're right at the front, you're listening on delay. It doesn't work. You know, you might as well be watching them on a video screen when you are watching them on video screen. Um, but it was a good set list, good mixture of tracks from their Warner years, pretty much. Um, and this is a good recording. I think it's a compilation from the three nights, I think, rather than one specific night. But yeah, very good. Uh, this was their album after Californication. This is By The Way. A uh, lot of good stuff on this. Title track. Uh, Zephyr song. Can't Stop. Throw Away Your Television. Cabron I really love. And all the other stuff's good as well. That's the last really good album, in my opinion. And then finally for this video, uh, this is Marianne Faithful Before the Poison. Uh, this is an album she recorded in 2004. And all the tracks... Bar one... But who's he? Uh, I've recorded, uh, written by... People I love, basically. That's what I'm saying. Who's John Bryan? Pass. Last last track isn't. It's written by somebody called John Brion Bryan. I don't remember who he is. But PJ Harvey wrote one, two, three, four, five tracks. Uh, Nick Cave wrote two, three. And Damon Albarn wrote one. So yeah, that's why I got it and it's a really good album. Okay, that's it for part 17. Uh, thank you for watching. You can watch past parts on the playlist. Keep an eye on the playlist for future parts. I have a come roughly weekly until I've run out of ones to show. Then I put some filler in and then I record some more and stick them out. Basically. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Oh,